Welcome to the first episode of MTM Update. This will be an English speaking online format. And in this format, we will discuss with international experts, international media topics. In the first episode, we'll focus on the US elections and the role media plays in them. I'm really happy to welcome Mrs. Buehmiller. She's Washington Bureau Chief of the New York Times. Welcome, Mrs. Buehmiller. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I want to start with your last coup. The New York Times uh, just recently published an article about the finances of uh, Donald Trump, in, in which it comes to light that he only paid 750 US dollar within the last 16 years. Um, how did it, it was, a, it was a message which was um, published in Germany news, in the TV news late night shows. So, and how was it received in uh, Washington and in the US? Well, um, I can tell you how uh, it was, it's, it's hard for me to tell how it was received in the US. I mean, I know there was an enormous reaction, certainly from the Democrats, from the opposition party, who were um, outraged that the president uh, who, uh, you know, on income of, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars paid less than a uh, a nurse make less than a nurse pays in taxes less than a firefighter pays in taxes um it was uh the number was a really uh uh it certainly was big news here whether or not it affects the election that's another story um a lot of the president's um very enthusiastic supporters his base supporters um it doesn't nothing seems to budge them off their position that they really like the president Uh, and it seems like uh, we, we just don't know how it's going to affect people. We think perhaps uh, people who aren't so sure about Donald Trump, the few Americans left who don't have, have a strong opinion about the race, uh, it might affect them. You know, again, uh, uh, the average uh, you know, firefighter, the average nurse makes, pays a lot more than $750 in taxes. So um, we just don't know. But we'll know more probably um, in a couple of days when there's some polls. Yes, because it's something new. I mean, it's it's not the first article um, which brings uh, things about Donald Trump um, to light, which uh, doesn't make him look good. Um, the New York Times uh, were one of the first newspapers who also investigated the connection between Donald Trump and the Russians and the Russian influences in the last election for the election now. Um, how did it change things? Uh, not a great deal. What's striking is that um, if you look at where Joe Biden was in July of 2019, um, before um, the the impeachment, before the Russia investigation came to a, um, I mean, before the Democrats impeached Donald Trump, he's about the same place he was. I mean, he's about about nine or ten points up uh, in the national poll. So there is very little that actually has changed the fundamentals of these ra of this race. The country. Is, is very divided and people have made up their minds and there's very little that is going to change people's minds right now who've already decided. So that, that's just the reality of the race. Um, it's almost, it's what's so striking is that Donald Trump was impeached in, in early this year uh, and it's not even discussed. Um, you know, he's one of the third American president to be impeached. So uh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's remarkable. Donald Trump's reaction to the article yesterday, and usually if uh, there are things he doesn't want to hear, it's just fake news. Um, fake news actually is not a new term, but um, it really came into, uh, into the speech in Germany and Europe with the presidency of Donald Trump. Um, because he's the one who says that the mainstream media, they are just fake news. They produce fake news. And um, From the European point of view, it's just the other way around. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, thinking of his inauguration, for example, the first day of uh, him in um, as president, you know, you you can see that there are few people in at his inauguration, and he's just saying fake news. How um, do you cope with that as a journalist, and how did it change um, your work? Well, um, when Donald Trump says fake news, it usually just means the news he doesn't like. Um, and I, I would like to note that 
he has not challenged the specifics of the tax story. He has not said, I didn't pay $750 in taxes. They have not challenged any specifics. They've only just, they've only just given this blanket, it's fake news. And interestingly, yesterday, after saying first that it was fake news, then he said, well, the information was illegally obtained. That implies that the information is correct. So, and by the way, it wasn't illegally obtained. It was obtained from people who had legal access to the information. So he's been leveling the fake news charge at the media for close to four years now. Um, it has had, I have to say, a corrosive effect. I mean, I do think that his supporters um, t- tend to not believe what they see on, it's seen in the New York Times or on CNN or on MSNBC. They tend to believe what they see on Fox News, which is, um, which is a, you know, a, 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 <laughs> a network that's very pro Donald Trump. So that is a problem. It has had a corrosive effect on how we do our jobs. I mean, it hasn't actually, it hasn't affected how we do our jobs. It has affected. Um, whether or not people believe what's in the New York Times. I can tell you that, um, you know, I would say the majority of Americans, Donald Trump has been, uh, has had a minority of support, you know, has not had the support of a majority of Americans since he took office, which is another historic first. He's never broken above 50%. Um, You know, uh, the majority of the country um, does not support Donald Trump. You know, 60% of the country does not support Donald Trump. It's because of the of the uh, the uh, intricacies of our, of our electoral college and the way we elect presidents that he's president. But so I would say it has had a corrosive effect, but it hasn't affected how we go about our jobs. We are still, um, you know, my job is to hold power to account, uh, to um, to get at the truth as best we can. And so we've done a lot of things. We have a very very um, uh, like tonight for the debate. We're going to have a very um, we have a very, very robust fact-checking operation involving dozens of reporters, five or six different editors, you know. So it's changed the way we, we, um, uh, we point out very quickly when we write stories that Donald Trump falsely said, Donald Trump said with no evidence, you know. We don't let him repeat these falsehoods in print. How does it feel to be fact-checker of a U.S. president? fine. I mean, you know, our job is not to take one side or another. Our job is to tell our readers as best we can what the actual facts are. And if you look at Donald Trump's rallies in the last couple of weeks, there, the majority of what he says is not true. I mean, he has a, has a standard um, rally sort of talk that he gives. I mean, he flies around and does um, speeches at, you know, airport hangars around the country because of the virus. He can't do, do rallies inside. Um, and it's kind of, he says the same thing over and over again, and there's so much falsehood in what he says. So, um, uh, so we, you know, we, we, uh, we, we make sure our readers know what he's saying is false. Um, you said that the viewers of Fox News, for example, they believe Fox News and F- Fox News is maybe not all the time that correct as the New York Times is. Um, what do you do to try to reach the, um, the people who believe This is the question I've been asked every day for, not every day, but many times over the past four years. What can the New York Times do to convince those people or reach those people? We do, we can't, our job is not to, um, you know, try, our job is just to produce superb journalism as best we can. Our job is to produce the kind of investigative journalism that you've seen the last couple of days. Our job is to cover Trump, you know, aggressively and honestly. And, you know, and again, The, well, all we can do is our journalism is produce the best journalism possible. And we've done that, you know, for almost four years now with Donald Trump. I mean, we've, you know, we've increased the size of the staff. Um, we've added a big fact checking operation. We are pretty much 24 seven in the Washington Bureau, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So th- those are things that we can do to, um, to cover Donald Trump. We can't, you know, um, and we hope that I can tell you one thing that the, um, Then the last couple of days with these 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 investigative stories on his on his taxes, um, we've had a huge um, surge in uh, readership, and apparently a surge in subscriptions as well. I, that's what I've been told. So that's what we do. We talked about Donald Trump now for 10 minutes. I think it's enough. Um, um, the, uh, the president candidate of the Democrats, Joe Biden, um, his campaign pretty much consists of not being Donald Trump right now. 
Um, how do you cope with that? Because, you know, a journalist, um, you, you want to, um, to bring to the people what the, um, the new ways are going to be. And um, how do you um, regard the US elections right now um, concerning content, actually? Well, I would, I would um, respectfully disagree that it, it's not, that the Joe Biden's campaign is not just, I'm not Donald Trump. I think um, there's a number of issues that he's talking about. He doesn't get the attention of Donald Trump because Donald Trump is the president and he's Donald Trump. But I think they're going to come up, certainly in the debates. I mean, one of the biggest issues he talks about is health care. Um, you know, in this country, we do not have universal health care. We have a complicated system. Most people get their health care through their employers. Uh, those who don't um, have um, have 20 million people who don't get health care through their employers now have it through the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare, that was pushed through by um, by uh, President, former President Obama and and uh, Joe Biden. Um, and I think that is a big issue that that if you look that Joe Biden is talking about. And especially since uh, the position of the Trump administration is that they want to get rid of the Affordable Care Act and put in their own system. They don't have actually a health care plan yet, but they're very eager to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. And in fact, on November 10th, there's a hearing in the Supreme Court um, about the Affordable Care Act um, to try. They've been trying for four years. So that in the middle of a pandemic, That is a huge issue. That's probably the number one issue right now for Joe Biden and the Democrats. Um, in 2018, in our midterm elections, health care was the number one issue that pushed the Democrats to big gains in the midterm elections, in the congressional elections. So I think, um, and the other issue, of course, which is related, in fact, a bigger issue than health care, is the handling of the virus in this country. Um, and we have, as you know well in Europe, um, a large percentage of the deaths and cases in the world. And the United States, for a major industrial superpower, has had a very poor performance on the virus. And um, we could go over and over that. But um, Donald Trump, one of the reasons I think he's behind in the polls is because of his handling of the virus. So that is a big issue that um, that Biden will, is going to talk about. The other issue, of course, there's a lot of them, immigration, you know, race relations, the protests this summer over police brutality, um, guns, um, rights for gay people. Um, so I do think Biden is talking about those and we have written stories about that. But um, it is true that Donald Trump sort of, you know, takes up a lot of the oxygen in the room. Donald Trump is uh, dominating the U.S. elections and um, thinking of U.S. elections, both of the candidates are always scanned by the by the media um, and uh, investigative journalism has to focus on both because one is better than the other. Um, do you also find stains on um, the, the clothes of uh, Joe Biden? We have done pieces. Uh, we looked at a long, there was a long piece about the allegations from a woman, Tara Reid, that he had um, sexually harassed her in the 80s, I believe. So we did a long piece on that. And there's been, you know, a close look at, at Biden's uh, climate plan. And a lot of Democrats think it's not enough. Um, there's been a look back at um, how he handled himself in the Senate. So yes, the problem here is that <laughs> no presidential candidate in history has ever quite told the falsehoods that Donald Trump has. I mean, it's kind of not a level playing field. It's like fact checking both of them in a debate. You're going to have a lot more fact checks on Donald Trump's side than on the other side. We found this in the Democratic debate. So yes, we have, you know, we've had tough, tough coverage of Democrats. Just ask the Obama White House, you know, ask the Clinton White House how we covered them. I mean, the press here have generally has the Washington Press Corps, the New York Times, generally has a pretty contentious relationship with whoever is in the White House. It's an adversarial relationship. You know, our job is not to make them look good. So um, this, but again, Donald Trump's, the relationship here and the coverage of Trump and our challenges are pretty much unprecedented, I would say, from previous presidents. I want to talk uh, to you um, about another topic, the social media platforms. Um, it's not only since uh, Donald Trump that media and the work of media really changed. The New York Times, uh, you have an online format. You, um, you know that uh, you find people um, in, on the Internet and um, the, the freedom of 
press and the freedom of speech, they are in the First Amendment of the US Constitution that shows um, how important they are for your society. Um, thinking of the social media platforms, everybody is spreading what they believe is right or what they um, want to be right. Um, so in, in June, the first time um, people really started to, um, to ban um, accounts to um, block Twitter and use of the US president because they um, were supposed to, to be um, um, to force violence. Um, how do the Americans cope with that? Do they think our First Amendment is in danger or do they say it comes way too late? Well, we learned from 2016 what happened with all the disinformation that was out there on the social media platforms on Facebook and on Twitter. Uh, and there has been a real um, move now by the company, by the social media companies themselves to sort of police themselves. I think um, many people would say they're, it's a little too late. They're not doing enough, but they are taking down uh, websites right and left that are that are just fake websites that are, you know, um, uh, Russian websites, you know, and uh, so they're they're much more aware of it than they were last time. Certainly, the New York Times is much more aware of it, um, and you see that you know Twitter is is actually putting flagging the Trumps uh, the president's tweets, and uh, what we have found, however, we had a story just last week that um, in 2016 the Russian the Russian trolls the Russian bot they had to make up their own postings and stuff. They're just now just taking Donald Trump's tweets, which are filled with disinformation about the failures of mail-in voting and the corrupt election that's about to occur. They're just, they're just taking those tweets. They're actually, are, they're, the intelligence agencies actually say that Donald Trump is doing the work of the Russian bots because they can just grab his posts and just amplify them out themselves. So um, I think the only difference now is that we're very, very much aware of this disinformation campaign. There's stories right and left about Again, websites being taken down. Um, but bear in mind that um, these disinformation campaigns are, 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 are amplifying what's already there, amplifying the divisions in American society between the right and the left. So it's not like they're, so just be aware of that. I mean, we will never know from 2016 how much that disinformation campaign made a difference in the outcome. We'll just never know. Um, we do know certainly that they were on, on the side of Donald Trump, the Russian, you know, the, the Russian disinformation campaign. But we cover it as, you know, we have our, our business staff covers it, our technology reporters cover it, and we're, you know, we're, we try to stay on top of it. I want to talk to you about the TV debate. There are several TV uh, debates which are taking place. The first TV debate will be on Fox News, which is the pre-Donald Trump TV station. Um, do you... Um, do you also see that um, how the moderation is going to take place or is it always fair? Um, Chris Wallace, who's the moderator on the, for the Fox News debate, is a uh, very tough interviewer. He's been very tough on Donald Trump. He's tough on everybody. I don't think there's any, no one is worried that, that Chris Wallace is going to somehow be easy on Donald Trump. Um, he, uh, Fox News is a, uh, I'm not an expert on Fox News, but it's a big, complicated place. And um, journalists, uh, a journalist like Chris Wallace, um, uh, who's been a journalist forever, you know, uh, son of Mike Wallace um, of CBS of 60 Minutes, um, is known for asking very tough questions of both sides. So um, no one has raised, uh, and certainly I'm not raising questions about, um, about Chris Wallace's um, uh, bona fides here. He's, um, it should be a, it should be a tough debate. And by the way, his job is not to sort of, his job is to get the two of them debating, you know, um, so that's what I'm sure he's hoping for tonight is to have some back and forth between Biden and Trump and not as much from him. How important are the TV uh, debates in the U.S. election? This one's very important because, again, most people, are, the vast majority of people, are, voters are decided, but there's some on the fence. And for them, it will be a big deal um, to see. I mean, the main thing is to see if, um, I mean, Trump is a tough uh, man to debate because, again, he heralds falsehoods. He's very aggressive on stage. We certainly saw that with Hillary Clinton last time. Uh, and, um, 
and you know Biden Biden's a decent debater, but you know he's got to hold his own tonight. And uh, but you know t- the president has lowered the bar so much with Biden. He's saying he's doddering. You know he's demanding that he take a drug test. And so I think if Biden is just able to stand up and get, some, you know, he's lowered the bar so much that so even a mediocre performance from Biden at this point might be OK. Um, Trump has really been pounding away at him. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, but uh, TV debates are also something which are um, always reflected in the German television. Um, from nowadays, sometimes you think you have the internet are people still watching uh... well they can watch any way they want they can watch on tv they can watch on live tv they can watch streaming on their laptops they can watch you know there's any that we can watch on web type websites there's any number of ways you can watch a debate so um what do you think will be the headline on the 4th of november i can't tell you i can't i can tell you right now that based on the polls Uh, Biden is is pretty far ahead in the national poll, which doesn't matter as much as the state polls. Um, there was a couple of polls today where Biden, um, there was two polls, one yesterday from us, the New York Times, another one this morning from the Washington Post. It, Biden is up now um, nine, uh, ten, nine points in Pennsylvania. That's, you know, that's a big deal because Pennsylvania's, there's very, a couple of key battleground states and Pennsylvania is one of them. You know, so, you know, the national polls are interesting to give you a sense of the overall picture of the race. But the way the race is decided is, a, is now just a handful of states it's decided in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Florida, North Carolina, Arizona. Do you think there will be a result on the fourth? You know, it could be a really, really tight race and Trump could win or it could be a landslide and Biden could win. It's just hard. All so much hinges on these, these this handful of states. So it's very, it's just really hard to tell. I mean, last time, you know, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote um, and uh, she lost by about, you know, a couple of hundred thousand votes in three states. That's what it came down to. So it's just, it's, it, our system is very complicated. So it's hard to tell. Thank you, Mrs. Bumala. A lot of things are unclear this time, but something is hopefully clear that the U.S. has a new president on the 4th of November. Thank you very much. Thank you.